Hey everyone, my name is Brendan and welcome back to the channel. And as Bitcoin and many of the altcoins are continuing to fall, Bitcoin is very rapidly approaching a crucial support level towards the lower end of this $20,000 range. Now, as we enter into the bottom of this range, we have to ask ourselves, will Bitcoin be able to bounce off of $20,000 once again and head back up towards that $25,000 resistance? Or is this the time where that $20,000 support level breaks and Bitcoin sees more significant downside back into the teens? Now, today I want to cover this question and talk about a little bit of the bullish news that we have been seeing specifically some good news coming out of coinbase which is a good thing to hear right now with everything that's happening over at silvergate so if this interests you at all make sure you stick around for the entire length of this video as there will be important information discussed the entire way through but let's go ahead and dive on in here now i'm going to make the candle chart go into full screen we're going to kind of really extend this thing uh, because what we've been talking about for the really the past couple of weeks, almost even the past couple of months, is Bitcoin stuck in this range. And I'm sure you're saying, Brendan, this isn't anything new, right? We've been talking about this range for forever now. And you're right, we have been. But the reason why this is important, because this area that was previously resistance, not once, but twice, we broke above this, tested it as support, and that brought us back to our highs. Now, after this, we have been just rejecting and falling. We broke back through the 20 day moving average, the blue line, back through the 50 day moving average, which was this pinkish reddish line. And now we are very closely coming back to this $21,000 support area that we previously tested back in February. And we bounced really, really well off this from around $20, or $21,000 all the way up to 25,000. So as we approach this, we need to understand that we use this as a local bottom previously. So the odds that we use it as a bottom here are going to be higher than if we never did this in the first place. So we know that this is a support area for Bitcoin. However, there's a lot of uncertainties happening in the traditionals right now. You have inflation numbers, which are going all over the place. Jay Powell seems to be pretty hawkish on his stance. People are very up in the air about job rates and housing rates and a bunch of other things as well. And so this is causing a really quite a bit of uncertainty. Now you look at the crypto market and you have Silvergate going on, you have um, a couple other big names that are in a little bit of trouble, and a lot of the major players, including Coinbase, have left Silvergate's side as a partner, kind of just saying that, hey, we want to halt services for the time being. Now if we jump over, Coinbase is still making significant strides, right? It's not a bearish thing for Coinbase that they can't really use Silvergate, right? But um be mainly because they just have so many other partners but what we are seeing is that coinbase is launching a wallet as a service business and i'm sure if you were like me you're kind of like what in the world what, like what kind of stance do they want to take here and we'll explain here but <clears throat> basically they want this to be targeting people that want to get into web3 they see that web3 is going to play a big part in the future but they recognize that one of the biggest hindrances to this is the barrier to entry. And we have talked about this so much on the, on the channel, pretty much about every vertical. One of the biggest hindrances is, you know, I guess one could argue is maybe ill will or maybe like a hack or a scam happening to someone and, and them saying that they don't want to get into the industry. But I would argue that the biggest hindrance is ease of entry, that barrier to entry that prevents people because they don't understand how to get it set up. They don't want to have to set up a private wallet, keep track of the seed phrases, yada, yada. <clears throat> and so what Coinbase is trying to do here is offer this wallet as a service. So we're just going to kind of read through this. <clears throat> now, WAAS, kind of like SaaS, except for WAS, uh, provides enterprises with technical infrastructure to create and launch customizable on-chain wallets. The exchange announced just a couple of days ago, <clears throat> or really this morning, um, that WAS provides a wallet application programming interface, or API, that allows businesses to create wallets for simple customer onboarding, loyalty programs, or even in-game purchases. The reason why I think that this is unique is that they even go out of their way and say that the really the big point of this is to make onboarding easier. So it's a pretty, uh, I guess, unique stance on this. 
Um, one of the things that they continue to say here is that Web3 wallets have struggled to gain wider mainstream acceptance because of their complexity, poor user experience, and challenges associated with maintaining seeds. And I agree with them to an extent. And so here's my thoughts on this. Um, number one, we are going to probably make this a little bit more centralized. It is most likely going to make some of these wallets a little bit less secure. So I think that needs to be understood. The second half of this is it should drastically make the barrier of entry and the ease of getting into Web3 significantly easier. So is it a double-edged sword? I would say yes. Uh, this should be able to onboard people easier at a larger scale uh, and kind of create this seamless integration that we need. However, it will probably make the wallets a little bit less secure. So if you're one of those experienced crypto users that knows how to do this yourself in a reliable manner, then I would say that there's probably not a need to go to a wallet as a service provider like what Coinbase is trying to offer. Because ultimately, the best way to store something is that if you know that you are the only person that has access to your seeds, if you know that all the power is within your hands, then the odds are you're going to be able to keep it safer um, so long as you know what you're doing. So as we're coming back over here, I want to tie all this back into the chart. As really Bitcoin approaches this really big support level, we need to watch for a bounce as Bitcoin approaches $21,000 because what we could see here is number two are really twofold. <clears throat> number one, maybe we form a higher swing high here. And number two, or I guess really three scenarios. Number one, we form a higher swing high um, in the short term and maybe we work our way back up to 25,000 uh, and potentially even break that. Number two, we fall back down to this 21,000 support level, try to bounce off, off of here and test it as a support. And number three, 21 or this $20,000 zone breaks and maybe we fall lower to some of our previous levels on Bitcoin, like the 200 day moving average, which is in the 19,000s, our previous consolidation zones, which are closer to 18 and 17,000, uh, and maybe try to form a higher swing low over there <clears throat> before the market rallies back up to the upside. Now, again, I've mentioned this before, but I think that once Bitcoin breaks $25,000, I think it's going to be a very fast move up to a $30,000 range, like roughly around that area. So I think it's just a matter of time until we are able to break back above $25,000, get back into the 30s or really close to it. And we're kind of just waiting on that to happen. So the crucial things to watch out for this week is will Bitcoin be able to hold? And if it does, um, is there any kind of an opportunity that we can make at any of these different support levels? So hopefully that interests all of you. Hopefully you found this pretty informative, uh, but there's a lot happening in the world of crypto right now, of course, with Coinbase and everything else. But if you want to stay up to date with everything that is happening, make sure you smack that like button, smack that subscribe button. There's a lot happening behind the scenes. And I almost forgot to mention Kathy Wood's arc uh, is ignoring what's happening with Silvergate. In fact, she or really ARK, is buying Coinbase stock for the sixth straight month in a row. So I guess that kind of goes into what we were talking about today. But I just saw this over on the side. So once again, I hope all of you did enjoy. If you want to stick around for a lot more content like this one, where we keep you up to date on everything that's happening in the crypto market, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, and I will see all of you in Friday's video.